What's up everybody? So today I'm going to be going over how to set up Acarip 10.5.2. This is the latest version that's currently out. There's really not much of a difference between 10.1 and 10.2. There's like few new media types and they fixed the glitch with the ET8550 where you have to swap the first two channels. So, but to get started, the first thing you do is you're going to head over to your printer tab and you're going to select the printer that first you're going to start with the printer you're going to select the printer that you're, you're going to be using we're using the et8550 if you're using the 85 8500 it's the same it's the same thing so go ahead and select the 8500 if you're using that one um, we're using the 8550 so we're going to select this all right next you need to go to the port and you're going to select where you have the 8550 connected to whatever port you should be using a USB connection to the printer. So just make sure you have the correct printer selected. So I'm going to select my uh, ET8550. Next, the paper size, the check paper size is off. And then for the media type, so this is the, one of the things that they've changed or they added a few new media types. I think matte paper was added, but I usually select plain paper. This seems to work for the ET8550. And then, uh, so resolution is basically the quality that the image will print. I print at uh, 1440 by 1440. The higher you go, the longer it will take to print. The lower, the lower qualities will print a lot quicker than the uh, higher quality. Anything above 1440, I really didn't notice much of a difference. Just a, it just takes a lot longer to print. And then for the feeding, we're gonna select rear tray. If you, the front tray, there's no way to load DTF film using a front tray, so don't you won't be using that one ever. Row feed that would be if you uh, take off the uh, the back printer cover, uh, you can feed paper through there. But for the most part, you'll be using the uh, rear tray. And then, so the speed, bi-directional, these are going to be different speeds that you can print at. I found, let's go ahead and load up an image real quick. Okay, so I found if uh, bi-directional works better for if you're printing like smaller like text, uh, text images or if you're going to be printing like name tag images or just images that are smaller. That have or ha images that have small print on them, I would use bi-directional. For the larger images, say, like an image like this, I wouldn't use bi-directional. I would probably use one of the unidirectionals for this printer to eliminate some of the banding uh, that you may get from it. So you'll just have to play around with the different uh, speeds and see which one works for you and which one works for that specific image. It's not always the same. You'll have to kind of figure that out as you learn. So we're going to just leave that as bi-directional for the image we're going to be printing today. The wave, this is supposed to be for realistic images, it's supposed to help also eliminate, uh, say your nozzle is clear, and you're still getting banding, this is supposed to help with some of that. For the, the white ink and the uh, uh, the white dot size and the color dot size, the drop size that the printer is going to print, usually if you're doing like, say, like a, a hoodie or something like that, you may want to use a larger uh, drop size. If you're using t-shirts and stuff, uh, a, um, you could use like medium, small. I usually use mixed or medium to large. Uh, I'm going to leave these as mixed for now. Cool. So this is going to be the printer tab. This is generally going to be when you're first starting up uh, AcRip or DTG RIP. This is going to be your first tab that you want to set up. And then after that, you're going to go to the, the color tab down here. And from there, we're going to go down here to ink channel. And now we need to set where we have our, our inks in the tank. Wherever your 
ink is in the tanks, this is what you're going to set it up for. And 10.5, uh, well, I got a spelling error there. <laughs> uh, this was the uh, other thing that they added uh, in 10.5.2 was they fixed that glitch with the channel. So you don't longer have to swap the first two. Um, so I have my channel set white, white in the first two channels. Then I have uh, cyan, yellow, and then magenta. And then black is in the last channel. So go ahead and once you do that, go ahead and save that. It this um, the best way to figure out the or the easiest way to figure out how to set this is to just print a nozzle check. Once you print out your nozzle check, look at your nozzle check, and it's from left to right. So just set up your colors according to your nozzle check from from left to right will be the same as what you'll set in uh, for these. So go ahead and save it, press OK, it'll be set. And then right here, this is going to be the color, how much ink uh, the printer uses for the, for the colors. Generally, you'll have to kind of play around with this. Another thing is if I'm printing an image like this, I'm going to use a lower um, ink usage or ink limit. I'm going to limit the ink a, a little bit lower. Um, if I'm printing, say, Say a half tone it. So I'm going to load up this image. So this is the half tone version of it. If I'm printing this and it's a half tone version, this is going to usually half tone. You want to use a lot more ink. So I'm going to set these a lot higher. Uh, in that case, I would set this probably 75, maybe even 90. And I may even set this probably 4550 for images like this. Uh, so it's the same image, but it's just the black is knocked out and uh, it's kind of hard to see. It's little dots that make up the image, not, not um, straight lines. So you generally you're going to use a higher ink percentage, if that makes sense. And then uh, for an image like this, which is the one. It's the full image with the background and everything still there and all the black there. You don't want to put all that, put all that ink behind this image. What will happen is you'll get a lot of ink mixing and then you may see like, uh, it's going to, one, it's going to take longer to, for the ink to dry. Two, it's going to, the ink may start to drip or it may start to mix. So you'll have to use a lower, um, lower ink percentage for this, for this type of image. Um, for text images, same thing. You can't play around with it. Those I usually use uh, somewhere in the middle. Um, it just really depends. Um, if I do have something that with a really like a lot of smaller, let's say, Something like this, like where it has a lot of small, uh, small images in the, in the, um, or small designs in there. I'm going to use a higher, higher ink percentage, um, to make sure that's covered. Or if you're using like small text, um, something with a very small text on it. Um, I'm not sure I have one. This might be a better example. Yeah. Okay. So something with this that has has a lot of s small lines on it. This I'm definitely gonna kind of up that uh, up the ink percentage to make sure those lines are covered. This is also a half tone, so the the whole thing is a uh, uh, dotted. So. All right, so let's move on to the next thing. Um, down here, um, I haven't really messed around with these too much. Um, so I'm still experimenting with those. Right here, this is your brightness and your contrast. If, you, if you're if you not using any like photo editing 
uh, software or anything, you can increase the brightness or the contrast of the photo by just increasing the numbers here. Generally, you won't need to do this if the the, the printer pretty much prints uh, once you set up your colors correctly uh, for turning off the uh, color adjustment. The printer will pretty much print uh, true colors, so won't need to do that. Um, here's your ICC profile if you wanted to use one. You just click on the ICC profile uh, button right there and then just use. And then in here, you'll have your different uh, profiles that you can use. And then also the different, uh, I guess, like color color schemes that you the printer will print using those uh, profiles. Uh, we're not going to use a profile. Well, I don't I don't usually use one. I haven't been using one for the ET8550. So one, once that is done, next, we will go over to the white tab. We're going to make sure that right here, the white layer generation, this is where you're going to select um, the white under the, uh, under the color. Um, there's different ones you can select, but for the most part, and almost all the time, you're going to be using 100% uh, white under any colored pixel. This would be if you wanted like a full white background, which honestly, I don't think anybody would ever use that. Um, it's a lot of ink. So the shirt would be really heavy. Whatever you print that on, um, is going to be really heavy. So maybe like a hoodie or something would probably be, um, the only time you would use that. But then, uh, we have the hundred percent. So it's only going to print white under color uh color pixels so it's the white is all behind here um if you go down here we'll just skip down we're going to drop down here and i'll show you guys you can see where it's going to print white if you if you click white view you'll see where the, the printer is going to print the white uh, this is what it will look like on the garment that you're printing on and this is what just the image looks like on the pc so this is what it looked like on the garment. This is what it looks like on the PC. And then this is what it looks like where it's going to print the white. And then so like we have that. This is 100% on the white background. Um, and then we also have gradient white. Use this on probably like maybe like lighter color shirts where it's going to print a lighter, a lighter white instead of a full, full white. Uh, Instead of a full white background, it, it, it's, it's going to print somewhat of like a kind of grayish, uh, maybe not grayish, but it's, it's, it's less kind of more of a see-through white. And then there's a few other ones. I'm not sure when to use those two um, or the spot color yet. Uh, so I'm still experimenting with these, with these last three. So usually set it at 100% white and it'll be good. If you're using the gradient white, this is how you can increase the uh, where um, where it starts, the position where it starts, and then also uh, how much white is used as well. Uh, but if you're just using this, you won't need to deal with this. Um, right here, um, we have remove black, uh, which won't work for this image. So I'll we'll have to skip over to here. Okay. So we have the remove black image. So we'll click this. But it and what it does is when you scroll over, it's gonna start to remove the black coloring from the image. This is what you'll see when it's gonna print. Um it's a 96. And the more you go, the more it's gonna remove. Increase that. And you can play around with it. Um, I don't generally use this. Uh, I use Photoshop to half tone and knock out the black. Um, but this is just a quick way to do it. Um, so we'll just set that back to 100. And then we went over this. Um, so this is. So. So next, next we have the uh, set material color for a preview. It this allows you to to set the color garment that you're going to print on. So whatever 
you're going to be print, uh, putting the image on afterwards um, or transferring the image to whatever color it is. Um, so if it's a black t-shirt, gray t-shirt, white t-shirt, green t-shirt, you'll, you'll be able to select it here and then get a preview of what it will look like. Um, so let's see. There we go. So something like this. Uh, green is probably a bad example. Uh -huh. Something like gray. So you'll be able to see the different different backgrounds for for that for that image. Okay, and then most of the time I'm using black, so that's what I have it set up. And then if I want to see it in white, you can just go to the color. So, all right. After that, we are going to select the white channel settings. We want to make sure both of these are on. You can print with one, but you definitely want to print. The more white, the better, um, generally. So, and then. Yeah, the more white, the better. That's pretty much into that statement, but just make sure both of these are on. I printed with one uh, for a while. It works, but I don't suggest it. Usually two is better than one. <laughs> uh, the last thing in the, on the white tab is your choke setting. I guess it's kind of similar similar to the, the gradient white. Um, the higher you go, the more it's going to... Um, I'm going to use this as an example just to show you what it's doing. Um, when you're setting it higher, it's it's increasing the white, so it's removing removing the white from the edges and pushing it closer uh, to the middle. You generally want to set it set it lower. Um, I use a rep I use a pixel range of zero to two uh, for Say image like this, I may set it at two, two or one or something like that. And a half tone image, I'm gonna use uh, probably a zero. Uh, for the most part, I'm using zero. I know I'm not really um, not much of a stickler about it. I haven't seen any issues uh, with really white around my edges or anything like that. So I usually set everything at zero. Uh, but definitely still experimenting with that, but that's what it does. Uh, and then also that is the last, last, last thing for the white, white tab. Next, we're going to go over to the layout and we're actually going to go up to view. We're going to set template. And we're going to set up our printer. Um, so I generally print at zero. For the start and zero for the Y. Uh, this is moving the red box over. I set both of these at zero so that way I can get the full print of the um, of the of the film. I want to set my my box up to where I know if I print inside the red box that it's not going to get cut off or have any issues as long as I'm imprinting inside where the red box is I should be good. Um, if you print too far to the right, you may get your image cut off a little bit. Or if you print too far to the bottom, uh, it's it, it's going to get cut off because uh, most of you guys removed your rollers. So you want to make sure that whatever you print is going to be inside your red box. So that's why I set it at zero because you can print all the way on this side. Um, when you start to get over here, it starts to get cut off a bit. So... We set both of these at zero. All right, next we need to set the width of the paper. Uh, oh, you have to make sure you set a number. So if you just backspace, you're gonna get that error. I use A3 plus paper, which is the 13 uh, by 19 paper. And I set that at 12.6.7, 12 12.6.7. 12 that is gonna be the width of the paper the pretty much the max width so as long as it's inside there uh, that's pretty much the uh i'll be able to print that the uh, that width and then for the height of the paper uh we're going to set it at uh 16.929 
the height of the paper that I can print. So if it's 16, uh, 16.9 point, uh, 16 um, that's going to be your kind of maximum uh, print width or print length that you can print. Um, you can probably go a little bit over. Uh, it's probably like 17.2, maybe 17.5. You have about an inch and a half that you can probably get that 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 you'll probably you have to leave out but for the most part you can probably print about 17 a little over 17 but for the most part to be on the safe side set it at this this was the recommended for for the printer um and for the printer uh for the paper size so to be on the safe side set it at this and you should be good next intervals we'll just leave this as uh the same uh x and y step same angle same and then we're going to go ahead and save that so we have that for later so in case i use a different paper size say i want to use like um a a uh, a3 paper or i want to use what is it the eight the eight and a half by 11 paper or something like that i can set up a different uh template for that so go ahead and press apply and press ok All right, head back over here. So once we're done, we'll see, we'll see our red box around the image. Now we need to go over to, so we're on our layout tab. This is the uh, last tab we got to use. So the paper size, we want to set it up for the paper that we're using. Like I said, I'm using A plus, uh, A3 plus paper. So it's 13 by 19. So here I set my image up, the paper size for, for the correct, uh, for the paper and the template is inside of that. So you'll see the red, the red line around it. And as long as I'm printing inside where this red box is, I'm good. That's, that's the max print size. So, and right here we have our output position. You can adjust it manually or you can adjust it by yourself um, if you wanted an inch across um, or an inch down or you can you can adjust it that way another way to do it uh, just automatically is if you go up here uh, to these but to these uh, buttons right here the program will do it for you so it'll set it at the top corner if you want to set it centered in the page if you want it centered in the middle of the page you can you choose the different options another important thing is you always want to make sure you mirror your images if you don't image is pretty much going to be useless um because it's going to appear backwards once you want to transfer it um there are certain images you don't have to mirror say an image like this if i mirror it It really doesn't make a difference. There's little, you can kind of see like little, little changes, but for the most part, it's the same shit. It won't make a big difference, but most part, almost 99% of the time, you will be mirroring your images. So always make sure this is checked before you do anything. This right here will allow you to rotate your images. If you want to change, change the rotation of it. Sometimes you may need to do that if you want to get certain images to fit correctly. Next, we're going to go down here to the output size. So output size is going to allow you to adjust the exact size of your image. If you're using, oh, actually, let's do Let's go ahead and set that up. So if we haven't done it before, and you don't have it set up, you're going to come over here to units to go up to file, go to units and set it at inches. Um, I think the default may be millimeters or centimeters. If you're not familiar with those units. Um, you can change it over to inches, uh, by just coming over here and selecting images or, uh, inches, inches. <laughs> um, this lets you set the 
the size of the image uh, so you know exactly the size it's going to print. Um, and then you can also see where it's going to print on the on the film. So I'm going to set it at 11. And then I can center it in the page and it's already mirrored. Um, that's the original the original. And this is what it looks like. Uh, after I mirror it, so. All right, next. It says scale. Um, This allows you to change the position. So if I wanted to, if I didn't want to keep the, the image the exact same uh, height and width, I don't want them to adjust at the same time. I can change this to false. And then this will allow me to say, if I want to make this stretch out the image, it'll allow me to do that. And um, so for instance, this image, we wouldn't repeat, but if we're using an image like this for here, we can go, say, if I wanted to have two right there, um, oh, can't do that. That allows you to put it on the side. Uh, and if it's going to be on the side, then you would have to rotate it. So it's in the uh, in the print size but generally something like this you're going to probably print these uh, probably below That will allow you to print them below as you to duplicate the image either um, on the side of on the side um, going across or going um, going down um, and then you can select either if you want them on top of each other so I can do it like that. Or if I want them spaced out, then it would space it out like that. But for something like this, because it has a lot of dead space around this image, you would put it on top to top. Um, that way you can get them printed uh, without having to go through and re resize the image. If I have, say, more than one, um, and I wanted to, let's do it again. Set it at three. just changes it from up and down uh, certain images uh, to get them to fit and pretty much that's pretty much the setup for accurate once you've done all that then just go ahead head over to oh we got to go through this okay so let's let's go over over the print a lot of people have issues with this right here this is basically everything we did uh, we want to make sure that's 100% white under any color pixel. Uh, this is our ink usage. This is going to be the channels, the white the white channels that we're going to be using. Always make sure they're both selected or you should you should have both using. Um, if you don't, it's fine, you know, but you're going to notice a difference between using one and two. Right here, we have our white setting and we have our color setting. This is what's telling the printer to print one one set of color and this is what it's telling to print uh, one copy uh, of white so to for dtf to work we generally print have to have a white layer background behind the image and to do that the printer needs to know okay i need to print a white the, i need to print a color color layer and then i also need to print a white uh a white copy uh layer as well so you have to set these both at one in order for the printer to do that, to tell it to print both copies uh, of white and then of color. But it also, in order to tell it to print the, uh, the color um, first, instead of just printing white and then printing a color layer, so they're on separate pages, you wanna make sure you have uh, 
these two boxes down here selected. So this tells the printer to print the color first. And this one tells it to print white plus color. So it's going to print it on the same on the same image. If you don't have this selected, you're going to be getting images printed out. It's going to print your it's going to print a color copy first and then it's going to print uh, a white copy. Same thing if you have this selected, it's going to print white and then it's going to print color. So you'll have the image swapped. You want to make sure this this is print color first and then you have the white plus color. That way it prints the white layer behind, not the color first. Uh, it prints the color first and then the white layer behind the color. So make sure that's selected. Uh, and then you would go ahead and press print. I'm going to show you guys a different image. So if you're printing an all white, Say I want to print this image. It's an all white image, right? I want to print. Uh, you can also right click and it will allow you to do, to just go over to the print setting. That's another kind of shortcut to get to the print setting. So for here, there is no color in this image. It's only white. There's no reason to have color. So if I, if I try to print color, it's going to give me a white it's going to give me an error. It's usually a white ink error or something like that or color error. So you want to make sure this isn't selected. Same thing. There, we're not printing color, so we don't need to select this box. Or we don't need to select this because we're not printing the color. So we only need to select one and then go ahead and press print. And that's only for only white only images. You would do this. So if it's a white only image, the only setting you're, the only white uh, setting copy you're going to be using is the white color copy. Um, set it to one. The rest of this you leave blank. When you're setting, doing any kind of colors, you got to make sure both are selected. That way, it prints a color copy, and then also prints a uh, or a color copy, and then also prints a white copy. And then uh, make sure these are selected. So color is first, and then it's printing it on the same page. And you would press print. All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for everything you need to do to set up Acarip. Appreciate you guys watching, sticking through, and hope you guys hope this helps uh, you guys get set up. So all right, guys. Cutting out.